Vsauce, I'm Jake, and Thor's hammer doesn't weigh that much. According to Marvel, it's 42.3 pounds, which is still a lot to hold, especially one-handed. But the reason the hammer can't be lifted isn't due to its weight, but because it takes someone who is worthy to be able to wield it. There's a common misconception that Thor's hammer was forged from a dying star when it was actually forged in a dying star. But let's say it was made out of a dying star, specifically the densest in the known universe, a neutron star. Once a massive star dies and goes supernova, the core may collapse to such a degree that the protons and electrons smash together to form neutrons, giving us a celestial body that can contain two times the mass of the sun within an object that is only 12 miles in diameter. In Caleb Scharf's great book, Gravity's Engines, he mentions how a sugar cube sized amount of neutron star material has the same mass as all of humanity. Taking the dimensions of Thor's hammer and assuming it's made entirely out of that material, it would weigh over 10 quadrillion pounds. So now you have 4.6 trillion metric tons, about 97 million Titanics, condensed into the size of an American football. And let's say you and I are having a conversation. I'm holding my Thor's hammer and I accidentally drop it. Boom! Being alive is no longer a thing you do. In fact, a good portion of humanity has stopped doing the whole living thing. At 50 megatons, the Tsar Bomba was the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated. Thor's hammer hitting the floor would be 1.3 million times that. The closest comparison would be the Chicxulub asteroid, which is thought to have eradicated the dinosaurs. When the asteroid impacted, debris was ejected out of our atmosphere, and upon re-entry, it grew so hot that it glowed white and rained down globally, setting whatever could be lit on fire on fire. Earthquakes shook the ground, mega tsunamis crashed into land masses, volcanoes erupted, spraying ash into the air, combining with the dust and debris to cover the surface of the Earth and fill the atmosphere, blocking out the sun. Since the hammer is so insanely dense and covers such a small area, if you put it on the ground, it would sink through the Earth until hitting the core. So it's best not to touch anything with Thor's hammer. However, it wouldn't even have to touch you to horribly kill you. Newton's law of gravity states that any two bodies with mass will attract each other. And we happen to have an object with an incredible mass squeezed into an incredibly dense package. If you were 100 feet away, you'd be pulled in at 1100 feet per second, almost the speed of sound. And then things get really messy because the parts of your body that are closer to the hammer experience a stronger gravitational pull than the pieces that are further away. And that difference is so drastic that your body would be ripped apart, also known as spaghettification. If Thor's hammer were made of a dying star, it would be devastating. It would also make Thor one of the strongest superheroes ever. And before you say, but Jake, it's magic, remember what Thor said in the first film. Your ancestors called it magic, you call it science. I come from a land where they're one and the same. Or, in the words of author Arthur C. Clarke, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And as always, thanks for watching.